Welcome to Orbital Dynamics, Part 55. This part is based on excerpts from the book, The Mechanical Universe. Now that we understand the factors that determine the orbit of a planet or a satellite, let's determine how an orbit can be found if some initial conditions are known. Suppose a satellite of mass M is launched from space, a distance of R0 from the center of the Earth. Assume we know the angle of launch phi and the initial velocity V0. How do we find the size, shape, and orientation of the orbit? The orbit will be closed only if the energy is negative. The energy which remains constant is given by this equation. For the energy to be negative, one half mv squared must be less than gmm over r0. The m's cancel. We can multiply both sides by 2. That results in v squared being less than 2gm over r0. In the previous section, we determined that e also equals gmm over 2a, where 2a is the length of the major axis of the or if the orbit's closed. Because E is known from the initial speed and distance, this equation determines the length of the semi-major axis. That tells us the size of the orbit. The angular momentum about the center of the Earth also remains constant and equal to its initial value, which is given by this equation. Because the energy and angular momentum are known, the eccentricity of the orbit can be determined with this equation. Once the eccentricity is known, the perigee and apogee can be derived. Their distances from the focus are given by these equations. So far, we've determined the size and shape of the orbit. The orientation of the orbit is specified by the argument of perigee, the angle between the line from the focus to the perigee point and the vector r. The angle theta zero can be determined from this equation, which is the polar equation of an ellipse, which is the polar equation of an ellipse. R zero, E, M, and L are inputs to this, to this equation. Let's say there's a satellite that weighs 5,000 kilograms. Let's say the initial speed is 4,000 meters per second. And let's say we launch it six Earth radii from the center of the Earth. That's 3.6 times 10 to the seventh. The angle from the radial direction is 30 degrees. E equals minus GMM over 2A. A thus equals minus GMM over 2E. E equals M, 1 half MV0 squared minus GMM over R0. We know all these variables. M is 5,000 kilograms. V0 is 4,000 meters per second. G is 6.67284 times 10 to the minus 11th. M is 5.92 times 10 to the 24th. And R0 is 3.7 times 10 to the 7th. If you plug in all those values, you get 1.6 times 10 to the 10th joules. I'm sorry, minus 1.6 times 10 to the 10th joules. With E, we can compute A, the semi-major axis. It's 6.4 times 10 to the seventh meters. Here's the equation for angular momentum. If you plug in those values, you get 3.6 times 10 to the 14th kilograms meters squared per second. Once we know E and L, we can compute the eccentricity, E, little e. In this case, the eccentricity is 0.89. The initial radial distance is r0. We can determine angle phi by solving for theta zero. Solving for cosine theta, we get one over e times l squared over gm squared m r zero minus one. If you solve for theta, it equals 136 degrees. Finally, the distance to perigee and apogee are given by this equation. Perigee is 7.0 times 10 to the six meters. Apogee is 1.2 times 10 to the eighth meters. The British astronomer Edmund Halley was the first person Newton entrusted with his knowledge of the structure of our solar system. He realized that although planets had nearly circular orbits, Newton's results implied that all bodies in space would have elliptical orbits. In 1682, a comet dominated the sky for months. Halley made repeated measurements of its path. Later, he applied Newton's method to find its orbit. Although his observations covered only a small segment of the complete orbit, he calculated that the comet had a slight, highly elliptical orbit with a semi-major axis 20 times the Earth's in a period of 76 years. Looking back into astronomical records, he found observations of comets in 1607 and 1531. He concluded that they had to be the same comet. Halley then predicted the comet's next return. He predicted that it would return at the end of 1758, 16 years after his death and 31 after Newton's. Halley's Comet, as it came to be known, was seen at Christmas 1758. At its closest approach to the Sun, it travels inside the orbit of Venus. 
At its most distant, it goes beyond the orbit of Neptune. The most recent closest approach was in 1986.